who doubts me now? The Empire is jubilant. Great processions of victory run for days through our cities. And Dragoras has shown his loyalty to my family and also his prowess in battle. His army is all but ruined, but his bravery against the crazed Celts of Galatia has broken their nation. The path now lies for me to march on their remaining cities and finally bring Greek rule back to unruly barbarians. But this is not the only news to celebrate. Eumenes in the north has slain the king of Parthia and sacked their capital once again. It was only days after that that they came groveling like fools to come under our protection. And as much as I would have loved to burn them all, I think a life of indignity and servitude is a punishment greater still. In bending the knee to us, they opened the floodgates to Bactria, and I am sure the armies of Adimanthos will be victorious once again. So, I ask again, who doubts me now? Who is willing to whisper my father's name behind my back? Who claims that I will sully his good name? For I say, I have proven myself worthy with blood and battle. For who remembers the man who built prosperity over the warlord bathed in blood? I may not be remembered in the histories like my father, great Antiochus the Builder. But at least now I will have a chapter all of my own. Hi guys, welcome back, I am Red Zed, and today we are continuing our glorious Seleucid campaign in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.5. Yes, last episode we had a glorious, glorious battle for Ankira. We are really pressing the Galatians back. Very soon we'll probably be at war with Pontus as well. And then pretty much Anatolia will be squared off apart from, you know, Atropatine and Armenia. I'm not too bothered about fighting them anytime soon, though. As soon as we've taken this area, I'm kind of happy to, to go after Greece first. And they can be mopped up later. Don't really think that they're offering much of a threat or doing too much. We also took a couple of settlements up here in the north. Uh, very nice. And we took Nisa as well. Oh, it was a great episode last time. So hopefully we can do the same again today. But before we get going with the episode, guys, there's going to be a few things that we're going to do. We are going to have a look at our nation in general and see what we're doing, how we're doing. We're now controlling 172 regions, which is pretty nice. When we get to 200, we'll have like a, a fifth of the map which is pretty good, uh, and it won't be too long. Uh, after Greece, we'll probably have around 250, so I have about a quarter of the map. We've won 145, lost 28 battles. We're second in our rankings. Military third, but I think one of these is the dummies. First in production, two in territory because the dummies, the rebels, should I say, have more territory, so we are top in ter territory as well. Financial first and population first as well. In terms of our allies, we've got the Sarka, Pontus, not for too much longer, Getai, Atropatine, Bosporan Kingdom, and Epirus. Our enemies are the Ptolemies, kind of. Bactria, Parthia, Cappadocia, Galatians, Adrissians for some reason, Greek city-states. We've got a lot of trade partners in Greece, so yeah, we're going to kind of, uh, and uh, Kyrene's still our protectorate. They've been our protectorate from the very start. Um, so let's have a look at, say, the... Uh, We'll go, sorry, overall overall ranking first. Let's go the top five factions, which is Antigonids, Carthage, Rome, us, and the Belgae. So all the people you kind of would expect, honestly. But let's stick in some of our current enemies, so like Parthia and Bactria as well, if I can find Bactria. There we are. 
Uh, so yeah, Bactria's taken a dip recently. Carthage has as well. While Rome keeps going, we are just clear of everyone else. Um, Belge there, and who is the other one? Antigonids. So yeah, the Antigonids don't look too strong, but that could be famous last words. Let's go for the military ranking. We are actually starting to catch up with Rome, uh, but that's kind of scary when you think that, you know, all our armies are in different areas on the map, whereas Rome's armies are all in pretty much one or two areas. Carthage has been smashed, so I'm guessing that's Rome beating them back. No dips for Rome at all. Uh, Belge, pretty massive, really, for, for what a, a nation it is. Uh, the Antigonids, Bactria have a lot of troops. Parthia, not so many. There's our production ranking, just gone through the roof with our extra money we've been getting recently. But so has everyone's actually at that turn. So I'm not too sure why that is. But yeah, production ranking's pretty good. Uh, territorial ranking, yeah, we are well clear of the rest. It looks like Rome only has 40 settlements. So just tipped over Carthage there. But yeah, not too many for Rome currently. And finances, oh, we are just skyrocketing, aren't we? Really nice to see. We still can't build everywhere in a turn. And that's, you know, our aim is to be able to build in every single settlement we have every turn. That will be the aim. But I think we'll probably need about 200,000 a turn. So we need to double our economy to get to that point, probably. Uh, and population, yeah. I mean, it says 1.6 million. I don't know whether that's raw numbers, but if you think about it, 172, imagine average is 10,000. So yeah, it's about right. It's about right. We've got more than one point. We nearly got 2 million population in Rome Total War, guys. <laughs> that's quite a lot, isn't it? That's quite a lot. So you can understand why our ranking is so high. So let's have a look at some of these numbers because they are quite obscene currently. Our income, 450,000 a turn. 64,000 of which is farming. Mining is only 12,000 still. So we need to bump that up a bit. It's not too high. Trade is 200,000. Uh, merchants, of course, they don't exist. Taxes, 134,000. And other, 22,000. So, turn expenditure. Uh, in terms of our wages, 21,000 on generals. Armies, we are spending 226,000 a turn on armies. Jesus Christ, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. That is a monstrous amount. Of course, on construction, we're spending 80,000 every turn. Recruitment, we're currently spending about 12,000 right now. It's mainly garrisons and cataphracts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've spent more money on our army than we get through all our trade, of course. I just want to check the family tree quickly. Uh, it'll take a little bit. Oh, no, it loaded very quickly. So let's find our glorious leader. There's Seleucus Nicator. And then we've got Amphion, we've got Antiochus Sota. Now we're on Antiochus the Angry. So Diodotus is over here. He's nine. Uh, I mean, Abderos the Thinker is the next one. And how is he related to Antiochus? He is Antiochus's dad's brother, so his uncle. So it's, it's his cousin. But I would prefer his nephew to be... I mean, he's going to die soon anyway. I really would prefer his nephew to be the ruler. I just like Diodotus because I like the name. I could make Ephistionas it, but nah, I prefer Diodotus. Quite a good, uh, quite a good bloke, really. Uh, I know he's not come of age yet, so we don't really know, but I'm hoping he'll be a good bloke. Uh, in other ways, we could go. We could go for Coerilos, uh, or we could go for Polypercon. Uh, they're both governors. They're not actually generals. So I want to get Diodotus out and I want him to be uh, the new heir. But I guess we'll see. Anything else we really want to see in here? Um, how much like military units do we have? I know we were saying we're spending 226 a turn. But how much actually was that? 520 units we've got in the field currently. Which... 
<laughs> it's quite good. So let's toggle the fog of war, guys. Let's have a look at what the AI's been doing. There we are. Takes a little bit to load because of how much is going on. We'll also find out where Cappadocia is, or Crappadocia, should I say. So looking at Pontus to our north, they're looking pretty darn strong, aren't they? They, they don't have a huge amount of armies, though, apart from these three. So I don't think we need to be worried about them too much. The Galatians do have that fort, which we could already see. But once we've taken this region, the Galatians are done. Um... And then in the north here, it says Cappadocia has this region. So Cappadocia has this region here, which is just miles away, with a fort that they're blockading the pass to it. Very clever of the AI. And they've got this region all the way up there. Honestly, not that bothered about that. We've got a rebel settlement up here with no one in it. Pontus, go and take that, bro. <laughs> like, what are you doing? But honestly, when we get to this, once we've taken Pontus, like I said, our borders here are, are relatively secure. It's all mountains and passes from here. So I'm really not bothered uh, about going into the mountains. That's going to be quite brutal. So what I think we'll do once we've done Pontus is we'll send all our armies back and we'll go across the Aegean into Greece. Armenia has now come into contact with the Sarakis. And you can see the Sarakis... The Scythians, they go all the way up here in the north. Look how, not a huge amount of settlements, but they're doing pretty darn well, I've got to say. Uh, the Bosporans over here doing all right as well. Now in the east, like I said, we've, the Parthians only have these two separate, uh, oh no, they don't. God damn it. So the Parthians have this one and this one. And they also have this region. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. That's not really what we want. Luckily, it doesn't have walls, but how far away that is from anything else. The Bactrians, of course, are doing well. They've got all their regions. They've also got these couple of regions in here, which is nice of them. Uh, but that's going to be a bit annoying to go and take that after we've conquered the rest of the land over here. But it is very rich land. So I am very much looking forward to absolutely taking it out as much as possible. It looks like all their trade has gone. Like, where has their trade gone? It's, it's disappeared. Maybe we can't see it, uh, you know, in their land too much. But these regions are generally very, very rich uh, in t because of all the mining. So we might be making a lot more money from mining very soon. Uh, and, you know, once we've done that, these armies, there's nothing really else for them to do apart from... Take out the Sarka. I know we're allied with the Sarka. Uh, but where is their, like, most northernly... Yeah, they've got a large city up there. But looks like they've only got, like, two settlements, really. Uh, if we could zoom in. Yeah, three, maybe. Maybe three settlements. That one. Another one somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, those, those three. So we could have a go... At taking them out as well. And then potentially look at... If we can get around this way. Then coming down into India. Well, I don't think we can pass through the Himalayas. So, what we're better off doing is probably taking out Bactria. And then just going into India. Because look how many settlements are here. I know it's going to be hard to maintain this. But we could become incredibly rich taking all these settlements as well. And they've all got elephants as resources. So, that's been the east side of the map. Of course, um, the Ptolemies still exist there. And right on the tippy tip of Djibu Djib Djibouti down here. Right on the tippy tip. And that looks like they haven't expanded there either. So it's just that region. Uh, so once that's done, their whole dynasty is dead. Fully dead. So that's nice. So let's now take a look at Greece. How is Greece doing? So Sparta has a fat army. A really nice army. But they don't have much else. The Achaeans only have a couple of settlements. The Antigonids look like they are the big bad guy over here still from the start. Apart from actually, Epirus looks all right. But the RDAI look absolutely massive. And they always seem to do really well, the RDAI. I don't really want to fight them. I just want to take Greece. I just want to take up to, you know, Epirus, basically. Uh, Alexander's conquest, so outside of Epirus. So... Up to here, really, is where we want to take. Uh, so, honestly, the chaos in Greece will work in our favor. 
will be able to fight different alliance blocks at different times. Uh, and the Antigonids, they're going to be the main main uh, uh, block to fight. But it looks like they have been kind of pushed back by the Adrissians and all that sort of thing. Across in Thrace, the Adrissians are doing quite nicely. Uh, the Greek city-states expanding a little bit. And we should go and attack them at some point. But we do want to take Thrace as well. But look at that. Tylus doing pretty well with some nice armies. The Adrissians doing okay. Uh, and then the, the Getai... Or the Gete, should I say, over here, have expanded quite significantly all the way up to Lugii land. <laughs> kind of in a roundabout way, though. Uh, Bosporans, of course, we said about before doing all right. Uh, but the Lugii are monstrous. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're massive. We've got a load of settlements. They have expanded pretty darn far. Fair play to them. But who's this down here? This is the Arverni. Wait, the Arverni? What? How did this happen? How did this happen? Did they trade it with the boy? But they're not even bordering the boy. That's so strange. The Scordisci, of course, in the center doing quite well as well. Actually, Antigonids have popped north a little bit, but I think they're a bit overextended at the moment. And it looks like the Scordisci and the RDAI are fighting each other quite nicely. The boy are kind of squished into the middle here, as we can see. But they've got a few more settlements than the start. We've also got the Chatty expanded quite nicely. The Suebi have pretty much fallen back. The Kimbri have a few different settlements, but very unlikely that they're going to be able to do much more. And then down in the south, we have an explosive Volkai. Monstrous Volkai, very big Volkai, very nice to see. Uh, and we also have a really big Insubres as well. Very nice, a lot of Alpine lands, so not the richest land in the world. But they've come all the way uh, past Venice into the east, into uh, sort of Dalmatia and Croatia. Uh, very cool to see. The boys still exist here. The Romans, you can see, just have a load of armies but aren't doing anything with them. Classic Romans. Go and fight, guys. You should win all those sieges if you go for it. Um, but yeah, very cool to see. And then over here, the Allobrogues doing actually okay. Not fantastically. The Arverni, though, doing well. And for some reason, have that bit over there. And then Middle Gaul, we have the Adui uh, dominating. But there is only one big bad boy among the Celts. And of course, it is the Belgae. The bravest are the Belge, and they always seem to do well because their starting position is just so good. They're very spread out, but they will be very, very rich very soon, guys. So don't worry about that. The Scordisci over here. Oh, sorry, the Trinovantes? Yeah, sorry, Trinovantes. Um, I always think it's Scordisci. Uh, doing fine. They're not, not doing great, really, are they, compared to some of the others? Um, and then in Iberia, we've got the Edetani pretty much taking the Aragonese lands uh, and the Catalonian lands. And we've got the uh, the Aravachi, my nemesis when I played as Carthage, pretty much taking the central of Spain, kind of like Leon plus Castile. And then we've got Portugal, or should I say the Lusitanians over here as well. Very nice to see. So lots of expansion. Carthage still holds on in this region, so fair play to them. But they haven't beaten the Massilia yet, which is a bit disappointing, honestly. <laughs> Carthage is a bit trash sometimes. Uh, and they've not even beaten the Massilia, which are even worse. So yeah, Carthage not doing great. Um, but yeah, the Massilia doing all right to stay alive. Fair play to them. But it looks like Carthage is kind of crumbling at this point, because let's have a look at Sicily. Syracuse is on top. Carthage has landed some troops, but Syracuse is has pushed them back. Whether they're going to push back the Romans, though, I don't know. But fair play to Syracuse, cementing Sicily there. Very cool. Very nice. And I think last but not least, we got Kyrene just chilling. <laughs> Kyrene's happy with what it has, so fair enough. Stay like that, guys. I think they're going to go... Yeah, they've got a big army there. They'd probably go for uh, 
that region there, which is quite good. I'm, I'm happy for them to do that. Go for some of these regions. Take them. Very nice indeed. But yeah, Greece is just a battle royale. The Boeotians and the Athens still exist. So does the Aetolian. Pretty much everyone still exists. But yeah, it's a big battle royale. So we can get in on that action very soon. Well, I think that's all of the nations, isn't it? So let's toggle that fog of war back. And do we have any more battles to do? I know we've just taken Ankira. Uh, we could do that battle, but I don't think it's a good idea. That one we can't do. Have we moved our men down here? We definitely have. Have we moved up here? I think we have. So, let's hope for this battle, because I love a river battle. So let's see. Let's end the turn, and let's see what happens. Finally onto the campaign map. I know that took a while, guys, but it's always nice to see what the AI's been doing. Oh, so Parthia wants to become a protectorate again. I mean, it lets us focus on the Bactrians again. They want 550 denarii for it. I, I'm, I'm willing to accept right now. I'm going to offer you map information. Just give me, like, 40,000 gold because I've got a lot of settlements. Very demanding. Okay. What about, like... I mean, can't, can they already see my lands? 10,000. Very demanding. Really? Look at... What about 1,000? It's going to say very demanding because they can see it, can't they? Regretfully, nope, they wouldn't even take 1,000. You little... Okay. Well, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that one. Uh, before some of the other fights... So, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of archers. But we're going to have to rely on our archers to fight the Celtic cavalry. Because it's all Javi Cav. Oh, and we all know how much I love Javi Cav. But hopefully there might be a hill. We can always hope. <laughs> it's not happened very often, has it? When we've been playing this game. That we've had a nice hill. We did have one fantastic one. Um, one time. But, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't look like... We'll get much of a hill, but we shall see, guys. We Here shall we are. Let's hear what Antiochus the Angry has to say. I mean, not as angry as I was expecting, big man, but it's fine. And we did kind of get a hill. Oh, yeah. No, it's a pretty nice hill, actually. This hill. Oh, yes. This should help beating back the foolish Celtic cavalry that'll come after us. I mean, it's a pretty big hill, isn't it? It's just annoying the trees are there because I can't really see what's going on with the trees. Anywhere else we want to go? No, I think this corner's good. Um, so let's go there. And again, you know, this, this one we are going to defend. When we get given the opportunity to defend, why not defend? We might as well. I'm also thinking, you know, going forward, we should probably, you know, some of the battles have some reserve troops because we've been very close to defeat in a few of our battles, haven't we? So it might be a good idea to get some reserve troops at some point, as in we have some reserve troops behind the lines. But for now, I think we're fine and we'll keep Antiochus with these guys. We'll actually group them. We'll group you together and let's group the line. And let's group the archers. Yeah, guys, I'm using groups. Wow. They're actually coming from the left. So we've actually set up in pretty nice place. They'll probably come straight up at us. Um, and, you know, our archers should get a really nice shooting platform from up here. So, good. Good. Let's watch them come in. They've got a pretty nice army. Very, very cavalry heavy, which is, you know, hard to deal with. Especially when it's missile cav, like we spoke about before. They're going to meet in the middle with the uh, the enemy, with the uh, other army. And again, if we destroy this army, we should be good. We'll get rid of those slingers. Should be pretty fairly simple. Oh, they're getting shredded. Right, archers, let's get you off that. But let's get up on the hill. Probably like there. It's like they're really focusing on this right-hand flank. So what I'm thinking of doing... Oh my god, they're firing Javis all the way from over there. Right of the skirmish as well. Not really the greatest option. They're kind of going for the flanks, aren't they? 
That's fine. I'm not too bothered about that. I don't think that's really an issue. Let's get these guys on guard mode so they won't chase anyone I tell them to fire at. So, yeah. Oh, noble cavalry is a good, good cavalry for them. You could fire... Where are you throwing your jabbies? Into the cavalry. That's a great option. The noble cavalry is great cavalry as well, but they do fire jabbies. Honestly, we're just going to have to suck it up for now. Just sit here and take it, unfortunately. Got more Celtic cavalry. They will run out of ammo. They only have, like, uh, eight ammo. So, let's go here. Let's see. Yeah, they've still got... A lot of them still have a lot of ammo left. How about these guys? These guys, the noble cavalry is pretty much out, so that's good. They're going for the charge against the Theroperoi. Fair play. I think they're... Oh, it's the general. It's the general. General. Generalski. Well, they haven't got any infantry to, to challenge us just yet. Whoa, what's going on there? I mean, the infantry is miles away. So, honestly, let's get around them and kill that general, for God's sake. Uh, he's gone for the charge again. Let's get over this way. Get the Celtic cavalry quick. While we're here. While we're here. Let's get him. Get him. Stop him. They should stop. Now that we've attacked them, they normally will stop. Then we'll go after the general. He can do what he wants. He's a gold gold star general, to be fair. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Kill them. Come on. This is a no... Uh, no, that's just normal Celtic cavalry. Let's turn. 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 Take the charge. And, yeah. I think we're good. I think we're good. Holding the lines. Very nice. I don't think... We, don't think we need to take our general out from anywhere else. Oh, the other general. There he is. He's come in for the fight. We've nearly killed one general at least. He's a gold star though, like we say. So he's probably been through a few battles. Right, let's get there. Really don't want Antiochus to die. That would be... You know, that would be the worst thing that could happen here. What are these guys doing? How much ammo? This Celtic cavalry has got loads of ammo left, so I have no idea what it's doing. Uh, right. Get out. Get out, boys. Get out. It's hard to see with the trees, but let's get out. Uh, and let's get down the hill, I guess, so on this flank. We are shredding them. They're all wavering. That's the other general from the other army, but it's not really an army, is it? Uh, right then, let's get through the middle of these guys. Is this a mass route already? So, really all we're worrying about is these boys over here. And we can probably surround them. Come on, cavalry. Let's go. I'm thinking, let's go after that Celtic light cavalry if we can. Just don't want to chase this guy away too much. Let's go. If you can just move forward slightly... Just come forward slightly and just catch them. They should want to charge you then. Yeah, catch them. There we are. Good. Looks like our cavalry is just so slow, doesn't it? Are we on slow-mo? No, they're just so slow. <laughs> they just are genuinely so slow. All right, you guys. One go there. One go there. That guy's broken as well. These guys aren't. Um, right, let's kill them. And now they flee. Who's this? Oh, archers, yeah. Kill them. They came back from breaking. Come on, we should be able to kill the archers. God damn it. There we go. There we go. Let's get them. They're very tired as well. I think that'll be everyone. Once they break, that should be everyone. And then how many have we killed? Well, we need to kill as many as we can. Try and take the city. Uh, right, I need to be careful here because they're very close to the edge of the map. So, let's go with... You go there. You quickly go over here. You chase them. You get them. You're going there. Uh, yeah, let's just chase whoever we can, really. They're very slow, our cavalry, aren't they? Look how slow they are. Go on, men. Your horses are slugs. It's going to be even worse when we get to uh, 
We get to Cataphract. Nice. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's 100% our city now. So all they've got is one last city. Antiochus the Angry. A glorious battle. A glorious battle for Antiochus. Very nice indeed. Theropory, 167. Fair play. Killed 1,000. Lost 95. Oof. That's going to sting. That's going to sting. That's the difference between, like, having that sort of army versus the, uh, you know, heavy infantry that the Celts have. So, yeah. Good battle. But we will see you on the battle on the campaign map. Here we are. And let's enslave them once again. And that leaves them with only one settlement left. One measly settlement. And Antiochus' army isn't even really damaged too badly. Right, this is going to be very, very interesting. We've got the Chalka Speeders there. Um, more of them. And the rest of it's just pretty much skirmisher troops. This army's untested yet. Adimonthus is tested, though. He has fought battles. Um, but this army is going to be coming in from behind us. So I'm thinking like four Chalcospedes there. Or maybe the Chalcus five Chalcospedes to, to guard the river. Maybe all the Chalcospedes. And then we'll use the Theroporoi and the Cavalry to deal with this army as well. I'm thinking that's the plan anyway. But I guess we'll see when we get on the battle map. It's just chaos this episode, isn't it? Again. And like I say, it's one of those things you generally get one episode, two episodes of building up, and then you get carnage for a couple of episodes, which I love. Let's go. Here we are. And it is a proper bridge. Uh, let's have a look, though. Anywhere else. It doesn't look like on the map. Normally, you can tell by the uh, by the sides. And it does look like this is a single bridge. What about here, though? That looks a bit indented. But I don't... Yeah, I don't think so. The only thing is, they, they do sometimes have the ability to swim. So I'm wondering... Yeah, they, they, the other army is going to come in from that way, isn't it? Imagine if it didn't, though. That would be fantastic. Can't see the settlement, but you can see the road. So I'm assuming they're coming in from that way. No settlement this way either. Right then. Well, so let's get like these guys lined up. Get them off phalanx mode for now. We'll keep you in reserve to go wherever is needed. And then we'll keep these guys blocking the road. We're a bit kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right now but i think it'll be fine we'll also get all the archers you know we'll get two archers over here and we'll get two archers over this side and when we start we're going to go on to slow mode or even pause uh, and we're going to do proper bridge setup like that like that uh, and then we're going to set up here as well. We're going to go there. And I'm going to get these guys behind just in case. And then these guys... I'm assuming they're actually not going to have too many troops that can swim. So we'll get the archers up that way. And then we'll get the archers down on the coast there. And then it doesn't look like they've got... Ah, here they come. Here they come. Let's slow it down again. I know I'm being a bit slow with this one. But let's come forward. Let's try and engage these guys. These We have to stop them getting to our bridge defense. That's the main thing. And then once these guys are all in place, let's get them in their phalangite mode. And hopefully this will be just death and destruction for the enemy. We are going to get peppered a bit with um, archers. There are actually a lot of peltasts. We do have some slingers and archers there actually though. Uh, but yeah. So now you're all in place. Let's get that. This is going to be hard to manage this battle. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, keep coming, boys. Keep coming, Theroporite. Let's uh, get these guys grouped. And we're going to just go one side and we're just going to try and mass route these boys. Are the Theroporite all on fire at will? They are. They should be able to fire as soon as they're in place here. 
potentially into the enemy, which is a Prodromoy. And there's no, no real place for that Prodromoy to go. So get in place. That's not the greatest formation I've ever seen, guys, honestly. I'd rather you, like, fight the uh, Theropoi in that. Why? Oh, we're on slow mode. I was going to say, why are they so slow again? <laughs> Come on, boys. Fire away. Fire away, boys. Fire away. Not all of them have even started firing yet, which is a bit rubbish. How are we doing over here? Looks like the archers are managing to fire. These two archers are firing. I think we can, you know, take these guys back from the, uh, the sides a little bit. Because I don't think they're going to really go for the swim too much. Right. We are engaged in battle on this flank now. We are very close to the edge of the battle map. So maybe I should have swapped out my boys. You guys, let's get you there. Who is dying so quickly? You guys are getting shredded. Right, we need to come to their rescue. Straight in the back of the Theroporoi. Let's get Adimanthos uh, to rally when he can as well. Go for the charge. It's going to be a big charge. The only problem we've got here is this army... They should die a lot here. Come on, big charge. Lots of, lots of weight behind it. Into the slingers then. Oh, they've gone straight for the charge across with the Asian cavalry. Here comes the general, though. Well, where are you going to run to, bro? Where's the edge of the map? I don't even see it, but it's there, isn't it? Where are you going to run to? Get in there. Yeah, the problem is here. They're all going to be able to run away. So we're not going to take the city. We'll probably be able to take quite a considerable chunk of the garrison out. These guys are all kind of surrounded now as well. So let's if we go into there, we should be able to maybe break them. So here come the boys that swim. So yeah, fire at them. Swimming boys. That's not... Don't really want to deal with them, do we? So you guys, let's bring you forwards. You can just stop them getting up the slopes. Same with you guys. Let's get there. And then over here, how are we doing? Oh, Big route, big route. Let's get out then. Looks like they're going to retreat the other way. What are you? The Hoplites. Right. Let's get in the back of the Theropoi once again. Get Alimanthos ra uh, rallying the boys. Broken. Get in there. Should be able to break all these boys all at once. They, if they retreat through the middle, that will be great for us. Right, you boys, let's get you in as well. Here come the boys that are swimming. You fire there. In fact, no, you guys start firing onto the bridge. Let's get you on uh, guard mode, though. Fire on the bridge. Fire at whoever's on the bridge. Right, you guys need to get all the way down here. Get them. You get the Bactria and Hoplites. You guys get over there. And it looks like we took a lot of damage with our cavalry, but it was necessary. Good, that's one of the generals. Right, you boys, let's get over there. Apart from you, you should go there. Let's get them. What are they? Just standard Prodromoi. Don't really care about them at all. Here they come. Those guys have just routed straight away. Looks like, Look how long it takes them to swim. Now they're swimming back. They're like, no, no. This is just brutal. Look at this. They just can't get through. This is going to take a while fighting their hoplites as well. Uh, but it's quite glorious, isn't it? Let's get there. We are getting shot at a bit. That's fine. You guys have broken them. Where's the rest of my cav? Chasing the Prodromoi. Yeah, no. Ah, screw that. You guys get here. If you've still got ammo, you might as well fire it. Uh, and we'll come down here as well. You 
Uh, all the cavalry. Let's get you set up here. Uh, I don't really care about the Frodromoi. I mean, what are they doing? Why are they going alongside? No, 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 no. Let's get there. We'll get our archers to fire at it in a bit. But yeah, I love a good, I love a good bridge battle. Don't think these guys can swim at all. That's the one thing. Right, let's speed it up. All right, this is it. This is it now. They're screwed. They're screwed. Like, they shouldn't be able to escape this. There we are. Good. Now he's going that way. Good. Now get our cavalry here. We probably won't have that much of an opportunity to, uh... Yeah, these guys... This is going to be a hard one because these guys are just going to be munching each other. The Chalka Speeders and that. Wondering... So now no one's coming this way. Can the Zista 4 a like, get across the river? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that was in effect. The Bridge of Death. Wow. Fire at them. You guys get up, up a bit. Uh, I'm thinking, like, if you guys get to the side there... Again, like, if you get, like, right up along there, you're going to be absolutely shredding them in the side. Uh, and, yeah, we just need to basically speed it up at this point. Slingers are firing in still, which is, you know, doing a lot of damage, but... Oh, well. Oh, what are our, what are our archers doing, man? Get over here. Do these archers still have... Yeah, they're still firing. Good. Uh, the slingers. I'd fire at the uh, these guys instead because they're a bit more clumped together. Guys, come forward. That's what we want you to do. I know it's a bit weird with the pathing, but you can do it. You really can do it, guys. There we are. Now halt. Stick your spears down, and that should really squish this unit a bit. Yeah, look at that. Squishing them. The bridge of death, man. We've absolutely shredded them. Good. This is what we like to see. They're taking a bit of damage here, though, aren't they? This poor unit. These guys are all a bit squished. Uh, you guys, let's get you away from the side. And you guys as well, so they shouldn't be firing at you anymore. Same with you. And we've just got to make sure our cavalry is ready to... Uh, Ready to respond when it needs to. You guys are done, so get you away. They're still they're still enjoying themselves in there, it looks like a lot of the hoplites. But yeah, this unit maybe not the best choice to get them to go there, but it has really pushed them back and kind of squished a lot of these boys. You guys halt, get your spears down. I get everyone here, in fact, to halt. That's really helped. Look at that. Yes, right. That's all their infantry gone. Let's go then. Straight across the river. I don't care about the one not rioting. Let's go. Right. You guys go there. You guys there. You guys there. You guys there. You guys here. Good. 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 Yes. Yes. Glorious. Glorious. It's what we like to see. Fantastic. I think they're going to get away before we reach them, a lot of these boys. But it's fine. Try and get as far as possible. That's as far as they'll go. Who's the last one? Right, everyone kill them. Good. What a glorious victory again. Oh, nice. We did lose a lot of Chalka Speeders there. But, oh, look at that. We killed 2,200. They killed, you know, probably 800. Um, so, yeah, pretty good ratio, honestly. The archers doing going absolutely ham. This Chalka Speed has 240, and I only got one experience. Really, this 276 for this Sister Foray. Oh, glorious. What a glorious, glorious battle. But anyway, guys. I will see you back on the campaign map. I very much doubt 
We'll have the city. Actually, we can have a look. Yeah, we won't have the city, but it'll pretty much be dead. Here we are. And it was a glorious victory, but unfortunately, like we said, it didn't get taken. But that's fine. Massive, massive battles. Massive battles. So glorious. So glorious. We've got a lot of people coming of age. A lot of cities expanding. We've got Goodbye, which will be nice because then we could got some more, you know, happiness building. Seleucia, Kili Kadnos. They have expanded. Kalonai as well. That would be nice to get some extra upgrades in there. Soloi. Oh, good. We can get some more ports. Uh, yeah, Adimanthos Alud <laughs> did get his uh, guy gone. But rioting in Gortina. Yeah, we thought this was going to happen, didn't we? Um, let's try swap you across. Now it's happy. But now they're unhappy. Uh, archers can somehow go a bit further, so get them in there. That's made that happy, but are you happy? Yeah, they are still, but that's not really the gre the best one, is it? This guy has died, which is a bit upsetting, but that's fine. But we've got Hermeas, who's come of age. Uh, let's go. Have we got someone in, like, Judea? Surely we do. Yeah, we do. Uh, let's go for Gaza, though. That looks like a, quite a good city to have a, a governor in. So let's go there. Good to have a few governors around this region now. And then Iaces. I mean, you're 61 and that probably not the most stable town. So let's go for you over there. And then we've got Theodota, Theodatas the Handsome. Godlike perfection. Lily livered. <laughs> Poor trader. That's not great for Seleucia. We don't want you. Definitely don't want you in Seleucia then. What about like uh, down here? Have we got anyone down here? We do. All the way along to there, really. Yep. How about down here? Yep. We don't have anyone at Antioch Persis, but it's a bit pointless. It's not worth anything, really. Uh, what about Sariasa? Yeah, let's go for that one. It's quite rich. 1,800. That's not too bad. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's not awful either. Retinue expands for Antiochos. Mentor. This guy, great. I mean, he's got 10 management. Nice. Must be absolutely churning out the money over here. Bell guy in the most advanced faction. Are you kidding me? Really? But yeah, Euthydemus, Antiochus the Angry got captured flag, and he got good commander. Good. We're now allies, and the Parthians are now our little boys. So, recruitment report. We're now building elephants. Good. I think we'll wait until the elephants are done, and then we'll send everything out together. But yeah, and then Pergamon, we're still recruiting some cataphracts. Caracata, we're recruiting them. And Ephesus, we're recruiting some more garrisons. Anything else of interest in the recruitment? Not really. But that's fine. We're now making 110,000 a turn. We are really starting to snowball. Right then. Well, what we'll do is we'll leave behind one of these boys. And we'll take all these guys back to Karakata. And they're going to get retrained. Uh, I don't think it's that much of a, a risk leaving them like that. I think it'll be fine. Uh, and I think we can just auto-resolve this now. They might actually... They killed a few, but they might actually try and siege us down. Kauris is only a minor city. So again, we've kind of taken the two minor cities in the region. It's got a nice bit of a barrack upgrade, though. It's also got an execution square. Probably not really needed there because it's near its capital, but oh well. Some of these places are large cities. They're going to be our great recruitment hubs in this region if we want to then expand into India, which I'm going to say we probably do. So let's go with that there as well. Now, the problem here is we don't really have many garrison troops, so we should probably do a bit of garrison recruiting. Oh, we can recruit, uh, retrain these boys now. 
Let's recruit a few Akontisti over there. Spam it in. I know it's going to cost us extra money, but it's just so I remember. Because we've got so many regions now, guys. Like, if I, you know, try and min-max it and recruit one region at a time, there's no chance that that's going to happen. You guys get alongside. And that looks like a draw-out battle waiting to happen, doesn't it? It looks like a pretty hard one, to be honest. But it's fitting that, you know, a battle with the Ptolemies will be hard in the end. Let's build there. We've not built there ever, really, I don't think. And this region could become really rich. We've hardly upgraded Alexandria, which could do with upgrading, really. How bad is the corruption here? It's not bad at all. So let's build the secret police HQ. That'll get rid of it. And then we can probably start building the shrine to Tyke. Corruption here, though, is horrendous. So let's build the execution square. Tarnis. Let's have a look if it will load. Again, corruption's really bad. So again, go with the execution square. An extra 200 a turn is, is really good. Yeah, look at that. That's going to make us loads of money. So I think what we should probably do is go around these sort of outer regions and build corruption buildings. You're building. You're building. What are you? Corruption. 658. Yeah, before you do that, though, let's make sure we've moved all our men. So we've moved you. We've taken uh, that city. What's it called? Kaoris. Uh, you army up here. Like, we don't need you over in Parthia anymore. Um, like, I know it sounds stupid. Like, thematically, it might not be the most sensible decision we've made accepting Parthia again. Um, but you know what? You know, fool me once. <laughs> I mean, they only did rebel last time because one of our cities rebelled across to them. So, I can't really begrudge... Uh, be begrudge... 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 Begrudge them that. Okay, that's the words. Um, I can't really begrudge them that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we will take it. But, yeah, it's It's fine. Right then, let's have a go at getting... If we can get you into there... Let's leave you for a second. I mean, this is a very unhappy region. But I do want to take the general. What if we leave here? That's okay. You guys can actually get in. So let's go with how many we would take. So we'd leave you, and we'd leave you, and the rest of you would all go to get retrained. Let's get out. It's only at 15% once we've got no troops in there. So that's, al that's already a good sign. Oh, no. It's still at 15%. Mm, there is a, a rebel in there. A spy. Let's get you guys in. Okay. And Kira is happy. 75 there. 107 here. Even take some more out of those regions. So let's go. Where are we going to go for retraining? I'd say Pergamon is probably the closest. Although, what units do we have in here? Oh, we do have high pastors, so we do need to go to Pergamon. Right, and then Antiochus the Angry took this region. How is this guy getting on? Finally, we might be able to take that region. You guys, you're coming up here. Probably the best re place for you to go now is Tauion. So, hopefully Antiochus can beat the Galatians eventually. Get rid of them. So that's all of these guys moved. Oh, we were going to do this battle. I think it's another case of auto-resolve. Although it's losing a lot of men. Again, it's a bit pointless me doing these battles for you guys. Um, yeah, not many of you want to watch them. So there's not really any point me doing them. And then let's get... Let's leave behind, say, those boys. How bad is that? Just 60%. I mean, not bad at all. We can solve that with a Shrine to Hera. And let's get across to here. They might actually even sally out against us here. Auto result. Oh, I was I was very worried about that one. I thought we might uh thought we might have lost it, but luckily we didn't. Zesties has grown now. That's actually really good. Get some extra buildings in there. Greek turncoat as well. Right, with the rest of our money, like I said, we're going to build in these regions where we've got a lot of corruption and try and reduce corruption. And that's actually probably going to make us more money than if we did anything else. 
So, like, for example, here... It's another 126. It's really, really good amount of money uh, to get in there. So, yeah, again, corruption, execution square. Uh, this one, again, another 100. You know, there's not many buildings that'll net you that much money. So, yeah, even like 100 a turn is rare to get from a building unless it's like the Spice Road or something. So, getting these is really quite good build uh, the sewers there instead. That'll keep them happy. Same thing down here. We can't actually build anything for corruption, really. Uh, Pacaras. Yeah, let's build the market. Extra three gold, huh? Not ideal. So then let's go over to... Let's uh, build on Crete. We've not built on Crete for quite some time. So how are we looking at corruption over here? Again, it's really bad. So that's going to hurt... Oh, 900 there. That's pretty bad. A thousand here, though. Let's build that. What's that? Oh, that's the barracks. That's not corruption. Let's build that. It's an extra 68. So let's come over to our main sort of area over this way. Smyrna was going to be a recruitment hub. So let's whack up that army barracks as well. Uh, Pergamon, is there anything we really want to build here? I mean, the catapult range is fine, but the armorer, that is something we definitely want in there. Now, Adramition, we weren't really building that up too much. Let's go for the crop rotation. And then the rest of this place, we've got 50,000 to spend on anti-corruption measures. So, execution square. Actually, no... Oh, that gets us 100, so that's decent. Sardis, we're building, like Kadoi, we can't really do anything with that. How about uh, Kaizikios? Uh, get the extra large strength of Temple of Hera. It's still worth it, an extra 60 gold. That's an extra 7, so maybe not. <laughs> uh, let's just build the sewer there. This is a really, like, you know, region that we've neglected completely. So it's good to get a bit of building done. In this region. 97 extra from the corruption. Once this corruption starts going down, guys, we are going to make loads of money. Once all these execution squares come in, we're going to be making a fortune. Like, the extra hundreds. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it all adds up quite significantly. Uh, so, yeah. Derylon, Apamea, Kibotos, your building. This one, let's get that. 118c, really good. Sagalossus is building. Kabira. Again, big corruption. 91. Very nice. Termesos. Get it? These execution squares are going to be invaluable. Especially in these regions that are a bit richer. So let's do that. Extra hundreds everywhere. We're finding hundreds. 192. That's what we like to see. Uh, yeah. 996. Uh, 150 we're getting from that. Very nice. And we've still got 30,000 left. Maybe not the Shrine to Hera just yet. Let's build that instead. Uh, Nidos, you're building. Rhodes, you're already building. All these places. Trelaeus, we're not building. So probably Execution Square. You're actually nearly uh, equal on corruption now, which is good. As in zero corruption. You're definitely not 200 from that one. Uh, you're building... Mytilene, you're not. It also helps with uh, public order as well. So it's kind of a win-win, really. Extra money and public order. Keep all these guys happy. So like I said, all of these aren't great. Let's build an execution square there. Keep them in line as well. Same for Gordion. These ones as well, we should. Yeah, 600. Just so much money to lose to corruption, but I guess we'll build a farm because we can't build the execution square just yet. Isaura. Yeah, let's build the trader. Uh, Karakazion. Let's build that up so we can get some more population growth. Selge. Let's go for the communal farming as well. That really doesn't have much corruption, actually. How about all these around here? Facelis. Let's build that. 146. Wow. There's going to be a big boon to our income in, in like three turns. Which will be really nice. You're building. You're all building, actually. You're building. 
Tayana, you're not. Oh, we're losing loads to entertainment, so let's... Oh, we don't even need that entertainment. Oh, we're losing 800 a turn from that, man. Let's do the same thing here. Let's build the execution square, make some money, get them happier. Mazaka as well, probably worth it to build. 4,900 from trade at Mazaka. Mazaka is an absolutely beastly region. Wow. 381 from the Agora. That is a region and a half. Wow, I'm glad we took that. I am glad we took that region. Wow, 1,000 gold we're losing here. Have we got enough for maybe one or two more? Uh, and let's have a look. Yeah, we've got enough for one more. Yeah, we are going to have an absolute boom. Uh, a boon to our income in a couple of turns. That's going to be 116,000 we're making now. Very nice indeed. I love it. And that's how many places we're building in. Jeez. We're pretty much building. There's not many places we're not building. Wow. So we are getting close to the point where we're going to be able to build in every settlement. That's fantastic. Good. Well, guys, I think we're going to leave it there. What a fantastic episode again. Really good episode. So if you have enjoyed, please do like. Again, I've noticed a bit of a drop off on likes on these videos recently. So please do give it a like. It does really help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.